Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Image Plane 3D node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we're going to bring in an image plane. And we can do this a couple ways. Right up here, we got a quick little shortcut to drag this image plane down. We're going to shift space, image plane 3D, and bring an image plane 3D node in. And what the image plane node allows you to do is it allows you to bring in 2D planar geometry into a 3D space. So whatever we want to bring in, we can use this node to bring in an image or other graphics or whatever we want to do. And it's going to put it in our little 3D world. So on the node itself, we've got our uh, little scene input here. So we can put that in line if we want, or we can just plug it into a merge node. And if we look at our 3D input, you can see we've got an image plane. And let's go ahead and uh, transform this back a little bit. So that is our image plane. And what the image plane needs now is it needs an actual material or image or something to put on that plane. And that's what this green input is for. So we could take a, say, loader node. And I could bring in our little uh, bike and girl that we used for our particles uh, node breakdown. And if I look in our 3D render, we've got our image right there. And if this does have alphas in it, which this does, these are, this is an EXR file of a 3D render. It's going to apply those alphas on your image. And uh, clearly we need to bring in a gamut node. And I need to uh, switch our little image here to sRGB. So there we go. So as long as you've got your ambient light on and your intensity all the way up, it's going to show the true colors of that image. As you can see, we can turn our light down and it's going to put less light on that image. So within the image plane node, under our controls, we can lock the width and height if we want for the subdivisions and we can change our subdivisions. meaning we're going to put more subdivisions on our actual image if we need to. We can create a wireframe and we've got all of our typical controls that we've got on most other 3D nodes that we bring in with our visibility to make it visible, unseen. We can call the front or the back faces if we want. Whether we want it affected by lighting or not. Whether it's a matte our blend modes, our normals and our tangents. Now it's normals and tangents for the entire image plane, not just the image, and our object ID. And under our material tab, we can, if we want, change the color, and it's going to change the color and mix that in with our original image. But if we leave it on white, it'll be the full image color and we can change our specular transmittance and uh, our material ID. Under our transform node, we can transform it. We can change our X, Y position and our Z position. So let's bring our little bike up there. And we can also change our rotation if we need to and our pivot location if we need to. Let me reset that. And additionally, we can change our overall scale. So now we've got our loaded EXR plugged into our image plane in our 3D environment. So we could add shapes, we can do whatever we want. We could bring in another image plane if we wanted to. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's give her a background here. So let's get our new image plane. And let's bring it back. And we're going to put that in behind her. You can see she's popping out. So this image plane is behind her. And let's go ahead and bring 
some uh, random car side footage to make it look like she's driving down the road. So we can bring in this media. And if we look at our render, we can uh, change our Z location of our media. And now we've got her uh, driving down the road. And yeah, I know all the colors are off, but uh, you get it. So that is the Image Plane 3D node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.